So yesterday I had the pleasure to visit Darby Communications and before I get into all of the footage and interviews that I had got from her wonderful staff yesterday, I wanted to give you guys a better overview. So I am at DarbyCommunications.com right now and I clicked on the About Us section and I just wanted to read you guys a little bit more about Darby Communications. So the website starts out by saying Darby Communications is an Asheville based public relations and digital marketing firm representing leaders within the outdoor endurance hunt fish and mountain lifestyle industries. We do everything from traditional media relations and event planning to social media management, email marketing, digital advertising, and athlete and ambassador management. Now we have the mission statement. Darby Communications is a team of fun-loving, hard-working communicators that brings a fresh approach to PR and digital marketing. We combine original ideas with good old elbow grease to deliver extraordinary campaigns and events. Never a one-person show, we incorporate teamwork into every aspect of our media relations and digital marketing strategies. At DarbyCom, our motto is work hard, play hard. It isn't just a saying, it's a way of life. So that I think is great. Um, I love the work hard, play hard. That is something that I heard a lot in uh in the military like you work hard and when you're get when you get done with your uh job you can go and have fun um and it's very common in kitchens as well um you put in your work and when you have your off time you know you can go recover and have fun um i'm sure there are plenty of other industries and folks that have that mentality and i just think it's great and then below the mission statement we have the staff of um Darby Com, and of course you have Coral, the founder, then Angie Robinson, president and partner, Corey Van Auken, VP of operations plus a partner, Suzanne Herman, media relations director, Katie Richter, assistant media relations director, Hannah Kaminer, senior account executive, Mindy Smith, senior account executive, Stacy Klein, account exec, Lizzie Markman, digital account executive. Lizzie Ann Peacock, Digital Account Executive, Cade uh, Gewanter, Account Manager, Abby Harris, Account Coordinator, Tim Nooney, Account Coordinator, and Gordon Brown, Account Coordinator. So you can see there's quite a few folk, quite a, quite a few folks here. Uh, 14, that, that's great, 14 folks. So y'all, Coral has a lot on her hand. Let's give her a little bit of grace. <laughs> If she, if she, if she posts a little bit late, I know I'm a little bit late right now too. I have been a little bit behind in class, but I am hoping to, uh, catch up this week and really just move full steam ahead, starting with this presentation. Good morning class. It is a beautiful, almost spring day type weather here in Asheville, North Carolina. Today I'm going to be doing a video of Darby Communications. Y'all know our classmate Coral Darby. She has a PR firm located in the heart of downtown Asheville and was gracious enough to allow me to come and do a video of her of her office and learn about her uh company's pr and marketing process so i'm going to start by giving y'all an overview of what it looks like from the outside nestled behind the building is this parking lot which is surrounded by a gorgeous trees Coral's office is located on the ground level. Walking up to it, you can see right here we have Darby Communications. Walking into the building, we have an open layout. All the lovely folks here working hard. Hello, I'm Coral Darby and welcome to Darby Communications. Hi, I'm Angie Robinson. I'm the president of Darby Communications. 
We are a PR and digital marketing agency, and we specialize in the outdoor industry, as well as endurance, hunt, fish, and mountain lifestyle uh, industries, realms. We are, oh my goodness, we have 13 employees right now, and we have been around for 16 years. Uh, we were rooted in the outdoor industry, and we started as PR, and as things have evolved, we've evolved with it and um, diversified into the digital marketing realm as well. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Angie. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Suzanne Herman. I'm the Media Relations Director at Darby Communications, and I'm going to touch on a little bit about the services that we offer here. So um, our bread and butter is PR, public relations, and we've been doing that since the get-go, but since then we've branched out and we offer everything from digital marketing, um, ad, uh, digital ads, Google, Meta, YouTube, things like that. Um, we do organic social media management. We do athlete and ambassador management. Um, we do content creation in the form of blogs and blog management, um, curating blogs as well as creating blogs. Um, and then, you know, all the things that come under PR, which is more than just public relations. It's more than people think. I think sometimes people think PR is throwing parties, but um, <laughs> there's so much more to it and so much strategy and research, reading and writing involved. So um, every day is different. And, you know, we're always touching on different projects for our clients. And so it is uh, very unboring. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Mindy Smith and I am a senior account executive here at Darby Communications. And I am so excited to share about our approach to media relations, which is our bread and butter here at Darby. So our approach to media relations really goes into a lot of research. This includes trends that is, you know, that are happening within the industry, as well as you know, what our media contacts are doing? What are they up to? What are they writing and talking about right now? Um, it's also a part, or one of our core tactics includes staying in touch with those media contacts. So we want to engage with them outside of just asking them to write or talk about our client or a product that our client is launching. Um, so we really wanna engage with them through their newsletters or substacks, their social media stories or content that they're already creating. Um, we want to be very intentional about our outreach. So when that time comes to ask them to talk or write or share about our client or our story, we want it to be so warm and so intentional that they're like, absolutely, I'm so excited to talk about this. And then, you know, one thing that Darby is really, really good at and excels at is just communi communicating agency-wide about trends that are happening, what's happening within a journalist or editor or YouTuber's life. Like if something happens regarding a death or if something, if they win an award, Darby wants to share that agency-wide so that all of us know what's happening and we can be mindful about it. So regarding our approach to media relations, one way that we keep in touch with journalists and YouTubers and other media contacts include in-person media events, whether this is at a trade show or such as a spring media mixer, which we are hosting locally this Wednesday so that we can keep in touch with local media who are right here in the Asheville and Western North Carolina region so that we can thank them and learn what they're working on and see how we can fit into their projects and story angles. That sounds like a lot of fun. It is. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Hi, I am Lucy Ann Peacock and I am a digital account executive here at Darby Communications. Uh, here at Darby, uh, we do paid ads, email marketing, and social media marketing. The really cool thing um, about what we hear, do here at Darby is we primarily focus on public relations, um, but it integrates really well with our performance mm -hmm. marketing here. Um, so if we get a really cool piece of editorial coverage, right. we can actually take that coverage and implement it into our strategy for performance and digital marketing. So for example, uh, we get this really cool piece in Gear Junkie. Mm -hmm. We can use that uh, in our paid ads, like on Google Ads. Right. And we can make a headline like Gear Junkies number one best water bag and right. something like that, you know, and use that to market to our audience. Mm -hmm. um, it helps build brand awareness. We can also insert this into our emails. We can use this to build out social media ads because um, right. people are looking for, um, I got to think of the word for it. <laughs> people are looking for 
that like reviews they're looking for other people's perspective on these products before they buy right, of um and so in implementing that into our performance marketing strategy is super important um in terms of what we look for to measure success mm -hmm. um kpis are key performance indicators um the Three big main ones are uh, click rate. We want to track how many people are clicking through that ad mm -hmm. and going to the website. Um, conversion rate, so how many people are clicking, are making a purchase or doing whatever conversion that we set. Right. So conversions aren't just, you know, purchases. It could be, you know, making a phone call, submitting a form, signing right. up for an email newsletter. And then ROI is another big important one mm -hmm. because we're paying for these ads. Right. Um, so we want to know how much we're getting back. So ROI is return on investment. So how much are we paying and how much revenue are we getting back? Right. I understand about that. I do social media a little bit and sometimes I will promote a video and, and you know, like on TikTok, for example, they have if you want X amount of views and X amount of new followers and you have to pay this amount and then Apple's like, okay, well, we're going to charge you more just for using the mm -hmm. Apple unless you do it on, like you have to purchase it through a desktop rather than through the app, which is absolutely ridiculous. That's something that I learned myself. Um, but I found, I have found that Facebook ads tend to be much more affordable and you can draw in a lot of people. Um, back in the day, I used to do like a, a food eating page on Facebook and I would do advertisements. And it was amazing. Like the majority of my following was in like India because I did a lot of vegetable based stuff. And I'm <laughs> like, it was interesting how Facebook kind of did that. I didn't necessarily pick like India to target it. They just kind of used their algorithm and was like, you know, was honing in on people who have that type of culinary taste. Yeah. So. Uh, with us, we can also take, you know, um, our paid ads on Facebook, Meta, um, and Google, and we can, you know, target it at specific audiences that That's we awesome. want to reach. Um, so like one client we work with, they focus on the outdoor industry. Mm -hmm. So we can like tailor that to like our audiences to that audience. Um, those, we also have a lot of locally based, um, clients and so sometimes we just want to reach people in North Carolina mm -hmm. or the Southeast um, so it's just whatever makes sense for our client. Cool thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Go? Okay. Hi my name is Stacy Klein. I work with Darby Communications and I have been uh, doing a deep dive on the affiliate marketing uh, service that we are now offering our clients. Um, affiliate marketing is something that's been around for a bit but it's really starting to come into the forefront especially in most modern um, media that we see day to day. Um, media has changed greatly over the last few years and the landscape has evolved from where media partners like the New York Times or Wall Street Journal were able to um, make money from actually selling advertising. Um, now that we're into this digital age, that's becoming less and less of a a place where they can make profits. So really what, what we've seen is everybody is stepping into the world of affiliate, um, which can really help our clients, not only in getting placements uh, with publications that have really great SEO value, but it also opens up uh, opportunities to partner with some more niche type bloggers and influencers on the social media side, um, which can really help them target uh, their audiences that can really become lucrative partnerships. Um, so as we continue to see the media, media landscape changing um, more and more, it's important that our agency steps into this world and really our PR account executives um, also become familiar with the process here because there is opportunity to not only gain um, a really great editorial win, but it also is a, a situation where um, our clients can then become really great partners with media as well. Thank you for sharing. I know it's interesting when you talk about affiliate marketing and just the power that influencers can have mm -hmm. and you know what a, a PR package sent to an influencer can do when they share that and they have that reach, you know, if they have millions and millions mm -hmm. of followers. I've, I've learned a little bit about that too, specifically like depending on, on what it is between the influencer and the uh, folks who want the PR, what mm -hmm. terms it could be like, 
you know, here's a complimentary package. This mm -hmm. could be your compensation mm -hmm. or even, you know, providing them with their own personal link where they can earn a small commission For sure. and whatnot. Um, it's hard to do, but again, if you have the numbers on your social media following, yeah, it can, it can grow very, very fast. Yeah. What we see too, especially with influencers who are really, um, popular on YouTube is YouTube's a really great, great platforms because if they do, let's say a product review, um, more times than not, that video becomes evergreen. So they can continue to make money time over time. And the YouTube algorithm works to their favor as well. The more views and more engagement that they get, um, the higher that video will come up, not only in a YouTube search, but also a Google search as well, since the two are owned by the same conglomerate, Google owns YouTube. Um, so it's kind of a win-win, not only for the content creator, who's the YouTuber, but it's also a win for the client as well. Uh, because the more times that video resurfaces, the more times then they're going to get eyes on the review and then the potential for uh, a purchase. And most times what we see, especially when it comes to something like a, a YouTube review or even like a SEO listicle or gift guide, um, people who are searching for those things are already kind of in that intent to buy phase in terms of the sales funnel. Um, so the more times than not that we can provide a, a commission, uh, for the person who's posting that link, whether it's through like a traditional listicle or it's just through a new facet like YouTube or TikTok, um, it creates incentives for both parties, which is really great. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, for sure. Coral, thank you so much for giving me time out of your day on a busy Monday. I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure to meet your staff. Everybody seems so very, very friendly. Um, the environment that you have created is very positive and everybody seems to really enjoy each other as well as um, all of the jobs that they do. What I really like um, is that you told me how big that you are on communicating as a whole to the entire team so that everybody is up to speed on what's going on. Um, I really think that is pivotal to your success as a lot of times communication can be lacking between different departments or different folks because they have different jobs and not everybody's on the same page. It definitely reflects um, when I was speaking to everybody, everybody knew everything. So I thought that was really amazing and I enjoy getting to learn more about the PR marketing process. I know a little bit, but obviously that's not my area of expertise. So thank you again, and I hope that everybody enjoys this presentation.